All right, good evening everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight we're talking about inflammation and OCD and let me go to the beginning of the presentation. <clears throat> so this uh, was by request right now, as those of you who watched last week, um, I wanna talk about the topics you wanna hear about. So if you have a question about a condition, let me know uh, on Facebook or YouTube. And I'm trying to watch all the comments and, and hopefully I see them. If, if it seems like I didn't see it, you can just keep reposting it. Um, so Friday night, we talked about cervicogenic dizziness, misalignments of the upper cer cervical vertebra as that relates to dizziness. And tonight we're talking about brain inflammation and OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Okie dokie. So this is a one of the best articles I could find on the subject. It's brand new 2020 psychiatry research and it's a really really great study because they retrospectively looked at this huge data bank of patients like 24,000 patients and I'll go through those details later on and then out of those 24,000 patients excuse me a certain segment of them had uh, autoimmune disease, or excuse me, obsessive compulsive disorder. And so with that, they evaluated connections between inflammatory markers in their blood and OCD. So let me go here. So as they stated in the introduction, obsessive compulsive disorder is characterized by unwanted, intrusive, and disturbing thoughts or images that cause anxiety. So anyone who has OCD or if you've known someone with OCD, there's a strong anxiety component to it. OCD is different from generalized anxiety because of many features, namely the fact that we have the compulsions associated with OCD. So basically you, the person has the anxiety inducing thoughts or images of you know, maybe they ran over someone with their car or there's something in a newspaper clipping that they have to observe or the image of, you know, someone shaking their hand and that there being something, some dirty bacteria on their hand. So these disturbing thoughts and lead to the compulsive actions, which they label here as repetitive behaviors or mental acts to relieve those thoughts or images. So that is the, one of the characteristic features of OCD. Those are the characteristic features. They also go on to say OCD is associated with significant distress and functional impairment. And it's like one to 3% of adults have OCD. So that's pretty common. Um, that's pretty common out of the general population. As I've talked about, depression is around 16%. Anxiety can be upwards of 30%. Uh, schizophrenia is 1%. So one to 3% is not completely uncommon. <clears throat> Basically, there's a female preponderance, and they go on to say also OCD is long suspected to have an autoimmune etiology, especially in the early onset cases. So for the pediatric patients, there's this condition known as PANDAS or PANS. So PANDAS is pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcus. So basically, there's a streptococcal infection, usually a pharyngitis, but it can be other areas of the body too. And as the immune system is attacking the streptococcal bacteria, then the immune system can create antibodies to dopamine receptors or serotonin receptors. So that has prompted this whole thing called the Cunningham panel. The Cunningham panel is basically an antibody test to multiple different dopamine receptors and serotonergic pathways and things of that nature. <clears throat> the Cunningham panel has come under a lot of scrutiny because we're finding that people without OCD or any association with streptococcus seem to have one antibody at least that pops up on the Cunningham panel. So for those of you who I work with who have OCD and you're wondering why hasn't he run out of Cunningham panel on me, that's why. Because in 2018, I believe it came out showing that. So is there an association with streptococcus in certain cases? In my opinion, absolutely. Uh, I think just as is the case always with lab testing, we have to remember lab testing is often not perfect. Oftentimes we can have false negatives or false positives and really critically evaluating that person's history is hugely important. 
and especially as the case with OCD. So if it's a young individual, if it's a child who immediately develops OCD after strep infection, we want to start thinking pandas, in my opinion. Um, but also if you're an adult and you develop OCD, considering inflammatory causes, we'll see, is important. Basically, they said here there's an increased prevalence of OCD in autoimmune diseases such as systemic lupus, erythematosus, and multiple sclerosis. So what they did is they looked at this, this issue of the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. So most of you have had uh, something called a CBC done, a complete blood count. The CBC is probably the most routine lab test, maybe secondary to the comprehensive metabolic panel. And the CBC tells us you know, how, how many red blood cells we have and what our hemoglobin and hematocrit concentrations are. The CBC with differential also tells us about neutrophils, lymphocytes, and platelets. So neutrophils generally are a subset of white blood cell that kills bacteria most commonly. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell that generally kill viruses. There are nuances to this, but that's the generality. And then you have your platelets who are associated with you know, clotting cascades and things like that. So here they looked at the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and the platelet to lymphocyte ratios. All throughout the literature for other disorders, they've shown that this NLRs, will term it, and PLR are good inflammatory markers. And basically, they've, they've seen that these are considered as biomarkers in the prediction and prognosis of cardiovascular diseases, malignancies, autoimmune diseases, and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Um, they're even being investigated for other psychiatric diseases like schizophrenia, bipolar, and depressive disorders, anxiety disorders. Go back and watch my broadcast on schizophrenia and depression. There's a lot of inflammatory components to those conditions, so um, it's not surprising that this inflammatory ratio or the inflammatory marker through this ratio um, was found in those disorders. So. In review, the researchers say, okay, we're going to take 24,000 patient records. They found something like, I think it's on the next slide, 416 people out of that 24,000 patient subset had OCD. And the cool thing is they could see, okay, who is being treated with Prozac, fluoxetine, because, and I should have gone into this, but basically with OCD, one of the mainline treatments is to use medications which are going to lead to more serotonin theoretically between the brain cells, so SSRIs. So they could see who was on SSRIs, who were not, evaluate different lab measures like C-reactive protein, sedimentation levels, other inflammatory markers, along with this NLR ratio and the PLR. The NLR is neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, so NLR and PLR. So what they saw, let me see here, as a conclusion, they saw the NLR and PLR, which are considered subclinical inflammatory markers, were significantly higher in adult patients with OCD. Although NLR was positively correlated, PLR was not, positive, was not correlated with fluoxetine equivalent dose. Hence, PLR seems to be a useful biomarker robust to antidepressant medication dosages. So basically what they're saying there is that the PLR is independent of them taking an antidepressant. So even if you have OCD and you're taking Prozac, the PLR still is a good indicator of what level of inflammation you have in your body. So this is pretty cool. Um, what does it mean for you? It means that if you have OCD, there's an increased probability you have inflammation in your body. Is it chicken or the egg? We don't know. Again, a lot of it depends on your clinical situation. Are you a 10-year-old child who had a strep infection and now you have OCD? Or, you know, were you, did you develop this later in life? It came on insidiously and there was no antecedent streptococcal infection. Also, with, with OCD, as I mentioned, serotonin therapy seems to be the mainline treatment for this disorder, oftentimes discussed in textbooks and the medical literature. So that's what most OCD patients seem to receive. Also, other forms of psychotherapy um, are important in, in, in the treatment of this disorder. Now, I've worked with OCD patients where there seems to be an inflammatory focus. I've also worked with OCD patients where the inflammatory focus was not as prominent. So 
that's my perspective. So I've seen OCD patients where we've done lots of work with diet and reducing inflammation. I haven't really seen a change. I've also worked with OCD patients where that was significant, or I've worked with OCD patients where there really seemed to be more of a neurotransmitter focus for their condition. I've worked with OCD patients who totally had streptococcus, and then they developed this condition, and it was difficult to manage after that. So that's my perspective on the OCD relative to brain inflammation. And again, for those of you who are interested, you can look up this research article, Psychiatry Research 2020. Okay, so let's go back to Facebook and see if we have any comments. And hi to everybody who joined. And again, if you have any other comments, let me know. And, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So have a lovely Wednesday night. I'll be back Friday night with another broadcast, everyone. Okay, bye.